here to have babies. They come here to drop a child, it's called drop and leave. To have a child in America, they cross the border, they go to an emergency room, have a child, and that child's automatically an American citizen. That shouldn't be the case. That attracts people here for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Welcome back to Harbor when Senator Lindsey Graham lent his voice. You just heard it to the Republicans saying the Constitution may need to be changed to end automatic citizenship for people born in this country. The issue exploded and Democrats responded by saying pretty much bring it on. They would rather talk about this than unemployment. Joining me is Congressman Luis Gutierrez, chairman of the Immigration Task Force of the U.S. Congressional Hispanic Caucus. Thank you, Congressman. And Congressman Phil Gingrey of Georgia. Congressman Gingrey, I guess I'm confused. I understand why people are doing this because of the case of what seems to be case, I don't know how many there are, of abuse where people would actually come in this country, have a kid, then split. But how do you isolate that from the normal protection you get when you're, you or I have a child here and they become Americans automatically? How do you separate our children from somebody who comes here just to have a kid, then leaves, or whatever this uh, dropping situation is about that Senator Graham's talking about? Well, that dropping situation, Chris, is what we refer to as anchor baby. Uh, my good friend and former Congressman uh, Nathan Deal has uh, a bill, uh, which I'm a proud co-sponsor of, that would eliminate that by very carefully defining, defining what the 14th Amendment uh, really is all about and who it's applicable to in regard to an alien uh, who is, uh, uh, has a child uh, in the United States, whether or not they become, become citizens of this country. Well, how do you write that? Uh, What's the language? What language would you well, use? Here's the uh, language. Let me read the language of the 14th Amendment, the provision we're talking about. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make it or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. So there it is. How would you change that to keep it from being abused, as you say? Well, Chris, as, as, as you point out, that language in, in Section 1 of the 14th Amendment uh, was written and passed, I think, in, in, uh, in, in 1868 uh, at a time when we had no immigration law. There were very few, I think maybe 6,000 immigrants in a 10-year period uh, back then. So clearly it was not, it was not written yeah, at all change in it? regard to the immigration issue. Of course, it was written after the Civil mm -hmm. War in regard to 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, 65, 68, and 70, abolishing slavery, making sure that everybody yeah, I know had all the that. right to We vote all know the history, Congressman, but how do you yeah. change it? How do you change it? Well, how well, do you, how do you have your kids question. become Americans? But so, now it is the great question. People are talking so loosely about changing a fundamental part of our law, which is if your kids are born here, they're Americans. My kids are Americans because I was born here. But if you start talking about saying that doesn't apply to people born here, then you got to go around and say, uh, my grandparent, my grandmother came from Northern Ireland. My grandfather came from England. Most people in America, a lot of people are like that. Their parents come from somewhere else. Grandparents come from somewhere else. Would I have to prove that they were here illegal so that I could prove my parents were here illegal? legally so I could prove that I'm here legally? What, how would you do the paperwork on this? Well, Chris, that's why Nathan Deal's bill was so carefully written. Uh, I'm not going to uh, say that we need to uh, knee-jerk and, and uh, eliminate the 14th Amendment. What I would say is we ought to have congressional hearings on this issue uh, and discuss the best way to do it. It may not be a, a, a congressional uh, 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 abolishment of the 14th Amendment, but simply legislation that defines exactly what the 14th yeah. Amendment means. Ten percent of the, the children born in this country uh, every year, Chris, are born to illegal immigrants. Uh, every country of the European Union has eliminated uh, anchor babies, yeah. and, and uh, we just cannot continue to do that. It is far too costly. Uh, okay. This country is suffering with unemployment. We need to address I this know. problem. I mean, let me go over to Congressman Gutierrez. The problem with Goody uh, Congressman Gutierrez, it seems to me, is how, I mean, if somebody comes here and has a kid and heads out somewhere else, well, that would be an abuse of the Constitution. But I don't know how many cases there are like that. People that come here and split after they get the kid born here, because that would defeat the purpose of having a kid here. Um, anyway, your thoughts about this move. First of all, I would say to my colleague, the, the, the House and the Senate can't abolish a the part of the Constitution. And I think that, that to, to stay before an election 
to pile on during this very tense time where there is a debate about how it is we change our, comp our, our, our immigration policy and to think it takes two-thirds of the members of the House and the Senate. And we know it takes three-fourths of the Senate to ratify that. We all know this is never going to happen. And to use the Constitution of the United States to create more of an environment of, of, of kind of scapegoating and finger-pointing, and then to use, I can't think of a more vulnerable section of our population than that. And then they say they're Christians. And then they say they're pro-family. And then they say, oh, let's protect uh, the sanctity of marriage. And then they say, I'm pro choice choice. I'm, no, then they say, I'm pro-life. Have that child under any circumstances. But as soon as that child is born, they say, woof, make it disappear from the United States of America. What are we going to do? Have immigration agents in the maternity wards of our nation? Think of the women, those of you who are pro-life, who will not go okay. to a hospital, who will not go and seek, seek out uh, medical attention for that child. The most vulnerable, yes, Let's live the sanctity, but let's not use those children to power. They're not going to grow up to be criminals um, and roam our neighborhoods. They're children. Let me just say this. If you want, Chris, it seems to me the Democrats have said, you want a biometric card? That ends illegal immigration. You want to go after employers? That ends illegal immigration. That's me. Chris, that's today, my position. Six, I'm not doing that as a Democrat. Six, it's just I think it's the no, right way no, to do it. Stop I'm, I'm the say, legal hiring. I agree. I agree. And so I'm for It's in my bill. It's the first two sections of the bill, the Democratic bill. Today, Chris, $600 million more dollars in the Senate once oh, it's approved okay. for enforcement. So we give them enforcement. You know what they give us? They say, nah, let's not really do that. Let's now go after children. They're simply piling on and corrupting okay, me, the Constitution. Let me let me go back to Congressman. Do you want to respond to that? And my question, by the way, are you for a, 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 a fake proof uh, Social Security number? So you can't come in and cheat and get a job here. You're for that, aren't you? Uh, absolutely, Chris. And let yeah. me just say to my articulate, uh, compassionate friend from Illinois, uh, he's just flat wrong on this. This is not about Christianity. He tries to lump all these things and say it's political, it's political season. Uh, the anchor baby bill of Nathan Deal was introduced in the last Congress, for goodness sakes. This is about the rule of law. And the American people are, are going to insist on it. They have insisted on it. Uh, and, and we cannot continue to let 10% of the births in this country uh, from illegal immigrants become citizens of the United States. We have 70 welfare programs, not just TANF and food okay. stamps and Medicaid and free care in the emergency room and free schooling in our public schools. Okay. We are breaking this country if we don't solve that problem. This is going to be know? very tricky to change, though. I, look, I can understand the sentiment if this is people coming here and abusing it and leaving and all that. Sure. But let me ask you this. Here's the question. If you're here in a student visa and you have kids here, should they be Americans? Sir, Congressman Gingrich. If you're here on a work permit, I mean a green card, and you've got residents, but you're not a citizen yet, should they be citizens? Let me ask you about those cases. They absolutely, uh, I'm glad you asked me that, Chris. They absolutely should be, and this is in the deal bill. And we can deal with this, as I say, if we'll have congressional hearings. I can work with my colleague. Uh, so who uh, would be excluded in the language? Gutierrez. I respect him. Well, and who let's would have be excluded? Dialogue. Suppose one parent is legal and the other one's not. What would you do? Suppose the father was an American and the mother was here illegally without papers. What would you do then? That would not be a citizen of the United States. If the, how about if, if the, the mother, mother was, was American? How about if the mother was American? That, no. First of all, what about if, the the father, if the father is a citizen, the mother would come uh, on a green card because no, she but, is a spouse okay. uh, of a, of a, of a no, legal not, resident. No, no, suppose they're and not married. That child suppose they're would be not illegal. married. Suppose they're not married. Suppose a woman comes here legally well, and meets an American and has a baby. Then what? Who's the baby? An American or is a foreigner? This is how tricky it is. Suppose child, the father, uh, uh, suppose the mother is American. Chris, and how about the mother's would American? Not be a citizen of the United States under the deal bill, and, oh, yeah. I, and I completely okay. agree with that. My problem is that it gets really tricky because the mother's American, but the father's foreign and here illegally. Can you deny her her baby as an American? Could, how would you do that? She'd just say it's somebody else's a baby. She wouldn't say the well, father's here legally. Uh, Chris, Chris, that's you're how tricky up this gets. That we need no, to discuss the, that's what it's called being a hearings. lawmaker. We absolutely and when you start need proposing to sit things, down and do that yeah, in a bipartisan okay, way. No, we don't no, need to need to start talking about changing repeal no. the 14th Amendment, but we can solve this problem okay, by working you, together. Let me tell you how hard it is to change it because if the mother's American, the father's here illegally, you cannot deny her American child to her, to the mother. This is how tricky this business is to be talking about this. I think people ought to get the numbers and the wording correct. 
before we talk any more about it. Anyway, thank you, Congressman Gutierrez, and thank, thank you, you Congressman Gingrey. A good debate. Up next, Sarah thank Palin you, thinks President Obama is in over his head. Imagine that. That goes straight in a sideshow. You watch a hardball only on MSNBC. Nine Iron, it's almost tea time. Time to face the pollen that used to make me sneeze, my eyes water. But now Zyrtec, the fastest 24-hour allergy relief, comes in a new liquid gel. New Zyrtec liquid.